Okay, so the, uh, the previous video, which you're going to need to watch, was my, uh, um, I guess, uh, act, act, reenactment of a lot of the conversations that take place between conservatives at, the, uh, at my VFW. Okay, and I imagine that a lot of any conservative place, probably American Legions and VFWs all around the country, maybe even Eagles Clubs, uh, Moose, Moose Lodges, any place where conservatives get together. No, I'm sure there's Democrats there too, but, uh, but anyway, I was just trying to, to make my point that uh, all the things that are taking place right now uh, don't make much sense. Um, and that's the purpose of this video, is to pull it all together and help you understand what's happening and, and what the democratic, socialist, Marxist, communist agenda is and how all of the things that I talked about in the previous video, I tried to make it fun, tried to make it funny, and uh, how it'll all come together and make sense to you, at least in my mind it makes sense to me. So to do that, we have to go all the way back to the uh, Civil War. And that was when uh, Lincoln was going up against Douglas in the war, and uh, uh, that was a very uh, controversial election, um, heated, uh, violent in some places. Um, you know, you, you know, you you always think that man, our times are the the darkest or the, the worst it's ever been. No, this country's been through a lot of near death experiences, and we're going through one right now. So, uh, but I like Barnes's attitude that. Uh, you know, there's always hope, and so we'll see. I'm going to make another video about the hope side, and that'll be after this video. Probably not today, but some other day I'll make that video. So, uh, anyway, Lincoln won. We all remember the history. And uh, the South, who had been preparing for war, uh, in, in that eventuality that Lincoln did win, um, the Democrats walked off of the, uh, out of Capitol Hill, and, uh, departed Congress and uh, they you know basically declared the Confederacy as a separate nation and uh, and then of course we had the uh, the shot heard around the world when the cannons opened up on Fort Sumter and the war had begun um, you know it's, it'd be interesting to go back and read a lot of the newspapers and stuff because you know you wonder why you know I was wondered why the North just didn't let the, uh, the Democrats have their way and just say, okay, yeah, we'll just be two nations instead of one now. You do your thing and we'll do our thing. But I think they felt so strongly about slavery, the Republicans did, that they wanted to end that scourge on this sphere here in the, in the new world and make sure that, uh, that it didn't exist. And so they were willing to go to war over that. You have to respect that. And, uh, and, and their goal was to, to free and make everybody created equal in the eyes of God. So that was how that came about. So let's bring it all the way up to uh, 2013 when uh, Woodrow Wilson, another Democrat, pulled off a major coup because you have to understand the Democrats, in order to, to win, they have to destroy the Constitution and they have to destroy the United States of America. Okay, otherwise their communist, Marxist, socialist agenda can never be achieved. Uh, it, with that nasty little document called the U.S. Constitution in the way. So the first huge uh, step that they were able to take was it was an unholy alliance between the Democrats and uh, the, the uh, just new, uh, European central banks. And basically they turned over the sovereignty of our, um, our financial system from the United States, or Woodrow Wilson did. He signed it over to the, the central banks in Europe. Um, all of the gold and silver and Everything that we had back in our currency was given to the Federal Reserve, which was basically given it to the, um, the central banks. In theory, it, it was still supposed to be housed here in the United States, and at any time we could break that charter and, and move those funds back into the, uh, uh, the U.S. Treasury. But uh, nobody knows for sure whether the gold and silver still exists or it hasn't been taken out of the United States. Uh, so. The vaults could be empty, and the dollar is really, really baseless and, and worth nothing. And since the Federal Reserve owns the gold, I'm not even sure what the process would be to get, to get it out of their hands and back into the hands of the United States government. 
So, okay, so that was the first big, big blow to the United States. Then we got to come all the way up to 1945 when uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, he, uh, by fighting the war, it, you know, World two wars, World War II against Japan, which by the way was a setup. You know, there was no way Japan could not go to war the way that uh, um, Roosevelt set them up because they, it was in their self-interest they had to. You'd have to study history to understand. I'm not going to get into a history lesson. Um, now, did we have to go help the Europeans against Germany? Probably not. You know, they, they, they probably would have lost, but that really wasn't our fight. Um, now, what, did it turn out to be the right decision? I think so. Uh, I'm glad we did it once we found out what the Germans were up to with those concentration camps, you know, basically uh, killing the Jews, um, you know, which is, which, which is what makes anti-Semitism so, so awful right now. So uh, one of the disadvantages of making a video in a parking garage. Um, so anyway, but what FDR was able to do after the war was he expanded the federal government immensely. Now you have to understand how socialism works or communism, okay? You're either part of the governmental apparatus or you're outside of it. There is no in-between, okay? So like you're either a member in China of the Chinese Communist Party or you're just a, a, a victim. Uh, and that's, that's gonna do, to fuel the Communist Party and make the country, make them more powerful. That's, that's the way communism works. So you're a peasant or a member of the party. There's no in-between. And so that's what the Democrats are trying to achieve. You're, they want to make sure you're either uh, part of the government or not. And look at the United States. About 50% of the nation now works for the government. And, and we're more now, now that, they, now that they've, what they did with COVID. But we haven't gotten there yet. So he put in Social Security. He added Medicare. He added Medicaid. Um, it was a, a great achievement for expanding the powers of the federal government. You know, Social Security is a tax. There's no guarantee you're going to get it back. Um, so, and unfortunately, our younger generation, they will never see a dime of that money, ever. So, now we come up to uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, a great man. Uh, this was one of the few times that I believe that a Republican won as a Democrat, because I view John F. Kennedy as a Republican. And uh, I believe that he ran as a Democrat because that was the only way he felt he could win at that time and age. And uh, so, uh, and he won. And the Democrats weren't gonna put up with that and we saw what happened there. He was uh, brutally murdered. And, uh, and of course, uh, Johnson took over after that, a true Democrat. And, uh, and then he expanded the government even more with the Vietnam War and everything that he did, following the Democrat agenda to the T. Okay, and uh, you know, did the Democrats assassinate Kennedy? You, you, do, you do your own thinking on that. So now we, uh, we come up to, um, well, I guess you could look at Richard Nixon. Uh, a lot of the uh, Republican presidents were really Democrats. And I list uh, Senior Bush, uh, George W. Bush. Uh, let's see, what other? Uh, uh, Nixon, I would put in that category. Those weren't Republicans. Those were really Democrats that ran as Republicans and won. The only true Republican president that I know of that we've had was, of course, Ronald Reagan, and that's why he was so popular. And the same as Trump. You know, Trump was a true Republican. Uh, Make America Great Again movement. Um, and that's why he was so hunted in everything that he did. Um, and, and, and luckily, they had to go to such bitter extremes. They really, really exposed themselves uh, and, 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 but they didn't expose their agenda and that's what we're going to, what I'm trying to, I'm going to have to explain it to you. Okay. Um, and then you look at, uh, and who's been in control of Congress. Okay. You say, well, Kirk, it's gone back and forth between Republicans and Democrats. No, no, the Democrats have been in control of the U S Congress probably since, uh, um, the, the Newt Gingrich, when Newt Gingrich took over, I think we had a, enough real Republicans in there. And when I say real, I'm talking about non-Rhino Republicans that had a majority that the, uh, the, the Rhinos and the Democrats couldn't overrule them. And so in, in those years with Newt Gingrich, they were able to get a lot of Republican uh, things done. 
You know, but since then, you you think about it, you say, well, gosh, Kirk, every time we elect the Republicans, nothing gets done. You didn't elect Republicans. You elected a rhino. Look at Liz Cheney. Do you think she's a Republican? Oh, hell no. That's a Democrat. That's a, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Look at uh, Mitt Romney. Do you think Mitt Romney is a Republican? No, he's a Democrat. He ran as a Republican. Okay, and there's about eight, seven or eight other ones. Okay, but you have, you have just enough left of the remnants of the Republican Party that are actual Republicans that, you know, they can't quite push through their radical agenda, or at least they haven't been able to. Okay, so what? Now we bring it all the way up to today's date. And, and now we can get into explaining what's going on, okay? All right, so we got to go back to the 1960s, all right? What, uh, what we were doing secretly during the Cold War, uh, well, unsecretly and secretly, was, you know, we were beaming Radio Free Europe into the Soviet Union for almost, well, ever since the invention of radio, just about, we, we, we beamed it into the Soviet Union. So the... the the Soviet citizens living under communism, they were getting a healthy dose of, of what it was to be free every day on the radio. And uh, and also, I believe there was a CIA effort, and I have no proof of this, um, but if there wasn't, I believe, I believe Radio Free Europe could have had the same result. But I think in the schools around the Soviet Union, they began teaching about capitalism and, and what it is to be free uh, and, you know, what... It, what it would be like uh, under a constitutional government, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's uh, basically how the Soviet Union was destroyed from within. And I, I believe the Democrats tore that page out of the handbook on how to, to create a socialist, Marxist, communist society. And, uh, and they said, well, if we can do the same in the United States and take over the education system, um, then we can do the, we can take over the United States and get rid of that nasty document called the US Constitution. So methodically, step by step, they've been able to take over the universities, the high schools, the, the, you know, and, and how, do, how did they manage that? Well, you know, I hate to say it, I'm not trying to put down, if you're a Democrat, I mean, a lot, I know a lot of hardworking Democrats, I just think they've been brainwashed, but uh, you know, Conservatives tend to work really hard, and they don't pay much attention to the world around them. They just got their own little niche. You know, I'm providing for my family. I believe in God. You know, everything will work out in the end. You know, but I do fault them. They should have been paying attention to what their kids are being taught in school, uh, much more so than, than obviously they were. Same with moderate Democrats. You know, I don't think a lot of them are for this critical race theory uh, teaching and uh, the Soviet Marxist kind of... Uh, the socialist Marxist communist agenda that their uh, elected officials have turned into. So uh, anyway, uh, so what, what? let's look at the analyze what the Democrats have been doing this past year under COVID. Well, <clears throat> they defunded the police, which is absolute lunacy. They, uh, um, they basically uh, worshiped the ground that Antifa and Black Lives Matter and encouraged them uh, and kept them out of jail. I call them the the, uh, the strong arm of the Democrat Party, uh, and and they burnt. You say, well, they burnt down their own cities. Well, I don't believe that they look at it that way, okay? Because most the Democrats, you got to remember, came from plantation owners that owned slaves back in the Civil War, and I don't think that mindset ever really left the Democrat Party. And for them to be able to have taken over, and by the way, how did they take over the the North? And that was another masterful plan. Okay, some brilliant genius in the Democrat Party realized that if they could buy the votes of the big cities, that they basically control the entire state. Think about it. If you control New York City, if you can get make that a Democrat stronghold, then New York forevermore will be a Democrat state. If you can get the city of Seattle as a Democrat city, you, you basically have turned Washington state into a dem the whole rest of the state, it doesn't matter. They can all be Republicans, which is basically what you have. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It's how the Seattle votes, that's, well, the, that's where the state's gonna be. They're gonna be a Democrat. Two, two more Democrat senators. If you could control Atlanta, Georgia, okay? You basically, and all the rest of Georgia could vote Republican. 
But if Atlanta comes out in force, Democrat, you got a Democrat state, okay? So the agenda has just marched along city after city. Uh, Philadelphia, if you can control Philadelphia, you and all of Pennsylvania can be Republican. It doesn't matter, okay? Democrat state, you know, and, and you just look at the pattern all the way around the country. And that's, that's basically what they've done. And how did they do it? Was they took taxpayer money and they went in with welfare programs and, and, and they, they basically told the minorities, hey, you know what, you know, you're not good enough to work. Uh, you're not good enough to get out there and make it on your own. So we're gonna, we're gonna help you out. We're gonna take taxpayer money and give you money, which they knew was basically suppressing them and keeping them from rising to their full potential as, as God's creatures. Uh, on this planet and uh, and they bought those votes and and so they created a dependency they're dependent upon the government you're not going to bite the hand off that feeds you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna vote Democrat if you're on welfare or you're you're getting money from the government or you're getting subsidies for your children you know that's the hand that feeds you it'd be like me going into work and telling my boss to screw off you know I'm biting the hand that feeds me I'm not gonna do that you know think about it so that's how, that was, it was brilliant, it was brilliant. And they just focused right in. But, you know, you do think that welfare went to the rural populations of the United States? How many people, if you live out in the country, how many people do you know getting welfare? <laughs> you know, think about it. You know, especially if they vote Republican. Oh my God. All right, so that was another brilliant stroke. So they bought a lot of states and turned them Democrat. And, and then you say, oh, okay, we're getting back to why they're burning the cities. I think it's sweet revenge. They took Republican states, I mean, 100% Republican states like New York, Philadelphia, Connecticut, you know, you name it, up north, even Michigan. Michigan, you know, Michigan was plot a lot of troops in the Civil War, okay? And they turned them Democrat, and then they destroyed them. <laughs> and I think it was bittersweet revenge that they could take those Republican states and just annihilate them, you know? That's the only explanation that I got. But it's part of their agenda. We're gonna to get to that. You're saying, okay, well, how does this fit into the agenda? Okay, so now we get to the open borders and they're taking illegal aliens and they're shipping them all over the country. And they're also bringing in a lot of, uh, a lot of criminals, uh, a lot of drugs. Uh, and, and so what are they reaping? They're, they want chaos, okay? They want chaos. That's, that's, that's why that's taking place. So that, you say, well, what, what, is, what is chaos supposed to do? How does that help, help their party? We're getting there. We're getting there. I got to get the background first. Okay. I can't. I can't jump to the end. All right. So. So that's what they're doing. You know, you're going to have a lot of violence on the streets as a result of having all of these uh, criminals coming in the United States. And then that's another thing was the rotating door policy. You know, we got to make sure that this rapist gets back out on the street. This murderer gets back out on the street. And, and basically, what they're trying to train the American people to do is to look to government and say, save us, save us. The criminals are killing us all. What the, what the people aren't gonna understand is that the Democrats created the situation to make the people cry to them to save them. Now, do you see where I'm hitting with this? Okay, by, by putting criminals on the streets, by bringing criminals in the United States. Now, what's the purpose of the illegal aliens? Okay, well, you've got, you got the Bill Gates, you got the Mark Zuckerbergs, you got the, you know, Jeff Bezos, uh, the, the, the super wealthy, you know, who have become a lot wealthier in the last year. Folks, they're your new plantation owners, okay? They're buying up a lot of the farmland around the United States, a lot of the apartment buildings. Uh, you will rent from them and be happy. You are now serfs. You are no longer citizens of the United States. And what's the uh, illegal aliens role in that? They're your new slaves, okay? They have brought in a whole new slave market to the United States. Do you think these people can make it one day in the United States without the help of the U.S. government? So they're beholden to the United States government. So now you're creating a socialist, Marxist, communist society of slaves that are dependent on the, the Democrats to get their, their daily handout to be able to survive. Do you understand? So they're, they're bringing them across by the hundreds of thousands. They've created a whole new slave market. And not only that, they've also created a whole new prostitution ring and human trafficking. You know, the whole gambit, it's almost sick when you think about it. You know, 
there are entire flop houses all going up around the country where these young women are being exploited by the Democrats for sex. Okay, I'm not saying the Democrats are running in there and screwing them, but they're making money off of it, I can tell you that, and the girls are the victims. You know, they think they're coming to the United States for a better life, and instead they're going to be in a living hell here, probably even worse than the one that they left in whatever country they came from because of false promises from the Democrats. Because once the, go the Democrats take over the government, you think they're going to they're going to give them a handout without strings attached? Huh? You got to vote Democrat. You got to support your communist Democrat party or we're going to cut you off, you, you know, and you're going to starve on the streets of the United States. So they're the, your new plan. The new plantation owners are here. The United States is now a country of slavery. OK, and then as soon as the chaos erupts here shortly. All right. And, and, and what's we got to add to the chaos. So now I didn't even mention in the previous video I should have was the six trillion dollar budget that Biden's doing. The Democrats are working as fast as they can to destroy the U.S. dollar and basically devalue our currency so that they can take control. OK, so when you put let's put the combination together, you've got huge amounts of crime on the streets. You got cities burning. You've got uh, uh, police leaving. You, you, you basically defunded the police or demor and demoralized the police. Uh, so there's, uh, there's no, uh, no way to, to rein in the chaos that's going to take place. You're going to have the stock market crash. You're going to have the uh, real estate market crash. And, uh, and then who's going to step in? The Democrats. They're going to say, we'll save the United States from this awful thing that has taken place. And they engineered the whole damn thing. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, okay, I guess we'll just summarize it right there. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, it's, in, it's just incredible to me that they were able to take over and, and turn our entire media apparatus into a propaganda machine for the Democrat Party. I don't even know. I guess it's because they had the money behind them. You know, when you look at Bezos, uh, Gates, and uh, Zuckerberg together, I mean, they probably got more money than 90% than of the world combined. You know, so when you've got that type of power, you know, and if they want to control the media, you know, money talks. And I guess that's how they took it over and nobody was really paying attention that uh, they were probably screening if you were conservative, you aren't going to work for any of those news agencies. And so they basically purged. And then, of course, we've got to include the New York Times and the Washington Post in those categories, too. And so basically all conservatives that worked for those organizations were, were taken out and, and liberals, liberal lunatics, and you know, they probably screamed them and said, you know what, yeah, that's a crazy person. We need to put them in there too. And uh, so that's how the, the, the communist, socialist, uh, Marxist, Democrat party is going to take over the United States. And they will put an end to the U.S. Constitution and freedom will be no more in the United States. But there's hope. There's hope, and I'm going to make a, the next video about that. And uh, I hope I encourage you to watch that because you're probably crying in your pillow <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh no, no! Tell me he's wrong. He's got to be wrong. I, you know, I wish I was. I don't feel that I am. Otherwise, how do you explain, you know, the stupidity? Because there's no way, no way a Democrat gets elected in 2022. I mean, it, even I mean, if you're a moderate Democrat and you, you're, and you're four open borders and you know uh, constant lying coming out of the federal government or your four uh, uh, burning down cities you know with black lives matter and antifa or your four defunding the police then you know go ahead and vote democrat but i just don't think that there's that many moderate democrats that are going to vote democrat which means the democrats know that in 2022 they're going to lose big time and uh so they got to they got to declare martial law Otherwise, all this is for nothing. You know, all this chaos, all of the burning of the cities, you know, all of the uh, bringing the illegal immigrants in by the busload and shipping them all over the United States, it would not make sense if they allowed the 2022 election to take place uh, and then have the Republicans. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about rhino Republicans. I think it's going to be a lot of uh, MAGA 
Republicans, and I don't call them Trump Republicans, I call them MAGA, Make America Great Again Republicans that would be uh, in, both, in control of both houses of Congress. And there's no way they can tolerate that because they've come too far. I mean, think about the planning that's, took, that's taken. It's like taken them almost 200 years, 1865, you know, 1965, you know, all the way up, well, you know, a little 150 years or so to, to, to put this plan in, 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 in place. And they've done brilliant. I mean, brilliant. And uh, so we're gonna, it's going to be real interesting to see what happens between now and 2022. And I do believe you're going to see martial law. All right, peace out, you guys. I'm not trying to depress you. We'll have that, Pete, that video up on hope, and I hope you'll enjoy it.